After we enter the stronghold, I will make arrangements for the cars to come in, Samantha replied. Although she did not understand why Jack cared much about cars that were of a lower standard compared to those that were found in the stronghold, still, since it was his wish, then, she was going to follow it. Jack nodded. After that, Samantha then led the way towards the city that was located outside of the stronghold. From here, they could see the tall walls of the stronghold. It was just that they were about five kilometers away from the stronghold. So, they could only see the visage of the tall walls. For them with whom the weakest was Samantha, being seven times stronger than normal humans, five kilometers was not something difficult to cover. So, the group began walking towards the stronghold. The city that they were going to was just about a kilometer from the stronghold. That was the closest the people from the stronghold could allow them. They were so much used to acting high and mighty in front of the mercenaries. Since even the weakest in the stronghold was stronger than any mercenary, that was something that they were so proud of. In a little over 40 minutes, the group of four finally arrived in front of a city that was not that far from the tall stronghold walls. Jack and the rest that were arriving here for the first time looked at the city. Although the buildings here were not as tall as those from Carta City, but they were both magnificent and exquisitely designed. The streets were unusually clean, completely unexpected of a city that was mainly dominated by mercenaries. The group entered the city under the curious gazes that came from the group of mercenaries. Nighttime was already setting in, and it was a surprise that there was actually a group of people that were arriving at the city at this time. Normally, at a time like this, there would be no more people that would be coming to the city. Hey, don't you think that this group looks like an easy target? A mercenary that had only entered the stronghold domain today asked as he looked at Jack's group with greed in his eyes. Jack's group was composed of three beauties and a young man. Apart from the beauties that had caught his eye, there was another fact that the way that they were dressed was enough to tell that they were rich. Although it might be true that the city was in order, but robbery and other crimes could still be committed, in the dark mostly. As for fights, that was something that happened occasionally. Now that Jack's group was mainly composed of a young man that did not look like much, as well as three ladies, the guy thought that they were the best target. The guy that was beside him looked at him as if he was looking at a fool. Then with a slight sigh, he said, Clement, although it's true that strength reigns here, you have to know how to choose the targets that you are going to make a move on. Huh? Is there something wrong? Is that group not just composed of a brat and a few girls? How strong can they be? The guy asked, confused. They seem like an easy target just from looking at them. But, if you make a move, you have to be ready to die. Do you think that just anyone can come to the stronghold? You are not. V, if you think like that. Just looking at their frames, we can see that they are not bulky at all. But, how did they come in? The guy explained. The guy called Clement was even more confused when he heard that. He thought of something and asked, Did they sneak in? The other guy palmed his forehead. This Clement was really an idiot. Still, he went ahead and explained, what sneaking in? Do you think that just anyone can sneak in? Anyway, you will not understand. This group must be related to the stronghold. Otherwise, there is no way that they would have come in here with the way that they look. Moreover, just look at the time. Do you think that just anyone can enter the stronghold at this time? The guy seemed enlightened. At the same time, he felt that he was lucky that he did not do anything stupid or he would not even know how he had died. He was not the only one that had seen Jack's group arriving. From the direction that they were coming from, it was clear that they were not coming from inside of the stronghold. But still, there was not even one of them that made a move against them. Most of the mercenaries had been here for a long time now. For that reason, they knew who they could target and who not to. Just from the way that Jack's group was walking so carefreely, they were clearly not afraid of the muscular and armed mercenaries. Samantha was familiar with this place. During the time that she had yet to become a guardian in the Butterfly Organization, she had made several trips to the city. There was even a time that she was forced to stay here as there was a problem in the stronghold that she didn't want to face. Although the city was majorly dominated by mercenaries, there were a lot of services that were offered here. There were hotels, inns, bars, casinos, and other stores that mainly dealt with selling weapons. Samantha selected the best inn and booked three rooms. One for Jack, another for Celine, and finally, the last one for herself and Denali. She then paid as the money that was required here was the same as the one that was used outside the stronghold domain. The following day, a group of mercenaries finally managed to enter into the stronghold domain. This group was emitting a fearsome amount of pressure that could easily scare a normal human. The majority of them had stern expressions on their faces as they walked. Moreover, they all had discipline, 
as if they were part of some military. Amongst this group of 23 mercenaries that was made of men, there was an exception that completely stood out in that group. She had short blonde hair with a slim figure that looked different from the bulky bodies that the other mercenaries had. She was currently wearing tight black leather pants and a leather jacket that matched. In her hands, she was twirling a military-grade dagger that looked extremely sharp. She was completely different. There was a curious expression on her cold face as she looked at the city in the distance. Although she seemed carefree, there was none of the mercenaries that looked down on her. Brother, what are we supposed to do now that we are here? I really want to get stronger and faster. There is still someone that I want to teach a lesson after we go out of here. The lady stated as she looked at the man that was walking beside her. This guy had some thick beard that was covering his face as well as kimped blonde hair that was combed backwards. He had a stern expression on his face, just like the rest of the mercenaries. He was wearing a combat vest on top of a black short-sleeved t-shirt that revealed his bulky arms, while holding a rifle in his left hand, the body of the gun leaning on his left shoulder. The guy looked at the lady that was walking beside him and sighed helplessly. Although he was always stern in front of the group that he was leading, he could not do the same in front of his younger sister. This sister of his was at times stupid, although he admired her bravery and dedication. Still, she was the one that could make him feel helpless. Ivy, why don't you just let me take care of that issue for you? Although his family may be strong, but I too have some connections. So, it will definitely not be difficult for me to deal with him. The guy suggested as he looked at his sister. No way. I have hands of my own, and I definitely can beat him if I want. It's just that. I myself am not that strong to deal with his family. Otherwise, I would have beaten him up already. That's why I want to get stronger so that I can deal with everything by myself. Ivy responded stubbornly. Her brother sighed. He had already tried several times telling her that he could take care of the problem for her. But the stubborn girl didn't want that. She wanted to deal with every trouble that she caused by herself. That was the reason why she had been working so hard, to become stronger. Once she knew that she could grow stronger when she came to the stronghold domain, she pestered him to let her come over. Although he was reluctant to do that, he still brought her over due to her continuous pestering. Whatever. Just make sure that you don't train so hard that you ignore your health. Okay. He stated after a moment of silence. I don't need you to tell me that. I'm not a small girl anymore. I know what to do. So, just don't worry much about me. Ivy replied with a pout. In front of her brother, she could act all spoiled. But in front of others, her image was completely different. The group was just about to enter the small city when someone intercepted them. The brows of the leader of the mercenary group creased together as he looked at the guy with a black mask covering the lower part of his face. The newcomer gave them no chance of speaking as he looked at the leader of the group and said, Daniel, you are needed. Daniel, who was the leader of the group looked at the newcomer with a frown on his face. He then asked, what is it this time? Am I not supposed to be having a whole week to do what I want? Why is it that when I'm just coming back from the mission that I was given, I am required again? That is not something that I can answer. Perhaps you can ask yourself after you get there. Anyway, I have already passed the information. As for whether you come or not, that is your decision. The guy with a mask on his face replied before he turned around and left. Ivy looked at the departing back of the man with the mask on his face with narrowed eyes. This was actually the first time that she had seen her brother in such a situation. He had always been a tough guy, and there was not even a single time where there was somebody that had ever talked to him so rudely. But this time, there was another person that had come over and talked to him condescendingly, before he turned around and left. And, from the expression that was on her brother's face, she could tell that he was angry. But it seemed that he was completely helpless to do anything. Who is he? Ivy asked. She was curious about this person that was capable of treating her brother like that. That is something that is kept confidential. Anyway, you will only know about it in case the one that needs me wants you to know. Otherwise, there's nothing that you are going to know even if you investigate. Daniel responded. At this moment, he felt helpless. The group that he was leading was actually previously a group of soldiers. But, due to the fatal injuries that they had suffered in battle, they had no choice but to retire. He was amongst them. He was the leader of the group back then, about three years ago. At the time, they had been sent on a mission, but they were ambushed. It seemed that there was a traitor within the military, and that was the reason why they were not informed of the presence of their enemies on the path that they had taken. During that battle, they had lost a lot of people. Still, the majority of the group suffered injuries. Due to the injuries that they had suffered, they had no choice but to retire early. It was after retirement that someone approached him. 
That person said that he needed the experience that he possessed in order to do some work for them. At that time, Daniel was completely against it. For one reason, he was injured and he was no longer as capable as he was during his peak condition. Another reason was that he was also a person that was completely loyal to his country. Although it was true that there was a traitor amongst the top echelons of the military, but still, that did not imply that everyone in the military was a traitor. So, although he had suffered a lot, that did not mean that he had actually given up on his country. But, all of that changed after he was informed that the injuries that he and his group had suffered were going to be healed as long as he agreed. Additionally, the missions that they were going to be given were not at all related to betraying his country. When he remembered that the lives of the group that he was leading had turned upside down after they had been injured, he decided to agree to this offer. But of course, he asked them first. When the group agreed, they came over and entered the stronghold. From thereafter, they were always given missions on a monthly basis. This was of course after they had been healed by the high-level technology that was found in the stronghold. But still, they were given a lot of freedom to do what they wanted. It was just that, if they were needed, they had to respond. As for the leader who was giving out the missions, he was the only person that was allowed to meet him. As for the others, they were kept in the dark. Still, since they trusted Daniel, they did not question him about who was giving out the missions. Brother, if there's someone that is threatening you, then, I assure you that I will get stronger and destroy them. How dare they try to blackmail my brother? Ivy stated. At this time, the spoiled expression that was previously present on her face had completely disappeared. Now, it had been replaced by a cold and indifferent expression. Anyone that looked at her eyes would feel a chill running down their spines due to the killing intent that was surging within them. Don't make a fuss about it. There's nobody that is threatening me, and this is something that I agreed on my own violation to do. Anyway, you are part of the mercenary group. You should know what we usually do. Daniel responded as he patted his sister's shoulder. After realizing that Ivy had finally calmed down a little, he looked at the group behind him and said, you guys go back and settle where we always do. Make arrangements for my sister. I will be back in about one hour at most. After saying that, he turned around and went towards the same direction as the person that was putting on a mask had left in. Ivy clenched her fists as she looked at her brother's departing back. She knew that currently she was completely unreliable to her brother. Although it was true that she was strong and there was always a group of people that feared her, but those were just low-level mercenaries. As for the mercenaries of the same caliber as the ones that her brother was leading, that was the kind of mercenaries that were not much afraid of her. Anyway, it was not as if she could just go over and beat them. Her brother had protected her for a long time, but until now, she had not done anything important for him. That was the exact reason why she was preventing him from taking action and dealing with the problem that she was currently experiencing. She believed that it was going to be better if she dealt with everything by herself. That way, at least, she would reduce the burden that was on her brother's shoulders. During the entire night, Jack had only slept for about two hours. As for the rest, he had been utilizing to go through all the information that he had been provided by Samantha. Of course, he had gone ahead and looked at the devices that were present within this city. With that, he had already gotten a lot of knowledge on how to create them. For that reason, he had already planned several modifications that he was going to make. But of course, he wanted to make something more advanced. Anyway, it was not as if the equipment and tools that were found inside the city were of a higher level as compared to those that were found inside the stronghold. Although he knew about this fact, still, Jack just wanted to gain a lot of knowledge about the basics. When he began studying the other equipment that were used inside the stronghold, perhaps it was going to be easier for him. Anyway, ever since the system had began affecting his learning speed, he had already decided that he was not going to utilize any chance of a free skill slot. He was going to learn them personally, and he would only use the free skill slots if he had no other choice. Until now, he possessed five free skill slots that he could utilize to gain skills about a certain profession. But still, he was keeping them considering that, the longer he was together with the free skill slots, the better they would be when he used them in the future. Jack was not the only one that was exploiting the advantage of the system. Celine too had been doing the same. Even before she came to the stronghold domain, she had made sure to try and learn almost everything that she had ever admired. Although it was true that she gained mostly theoretical knowledge, but it was not going to be difficult for her to gain practical knowledge. Moreover, her control over the telekinesis ability had improved drastically as well. Now, she was capable of utilizing it as if she was a professional at it. Additionally, 
She had also began studying the equipment that Samantha was using to communicate, as well as the laser weapon that was still within that communication device. After going through the information about the stronghold that he had received from purchasing it from a group of mercenaries that was selling it, Jack finally decided that it was time for them to enter the stronghold. Getting out of his room, he found that Celine, Denali, and Samantha were just getting out of Celine's room. It seemed that they were doing something together, which was not kind of strange considering that they were friends. Let's get going. We are going to enter the stronghold now. And our target this time is the Panthers organization. Jack stated as he led the way out of the inn. After checking out, the group finally left, heading in the direction of the stronghold. The city this time was kind of bustling with activity. From time to time, there would be a commotion where some people would be fighting against each other because of some silly reasons. Additionally, there was also a large group of people that was coming and going out of the stronghold domain. Currently, it was already 9 a.m. Not long after Jack's group left, they finally arrived at the entrance of the stronghold. There was a large gate that occupied several hundred meters. As for why it was that big, Jack did not know, and neither did Samantha. Of course, when Jack and his group were approaching the stronghold entrance, they immediately attracted the attention of the mercenaries that were currently camping outside the entrance, waiting for an opportunity for them to be selected, to be given a mission or to enter into the stronghold. Hey, do you think that they are going to try and enter the stronghold? Who cares? There are a lot of people that come over with the intention of going inside the stronghold. But in the end, they always end up getting beaten up if they don't turn back when they arrive at the entrance. But still, I do wonder how this group managed to get inside here. With how frail their bodies look like, I do have some doubts about them passing the test. What do you know? If they actually came in without passing the test, then that implies that they have some connections in the stronghold. Oh, is that so? I'm so envious of them. I have incredible capabilities, but still, I am not recruited by the stronghold. They, on the other hand, look frail, but still, they are being recruited by an organization inside the stronghold. There's no need for you to be so envious. You have only been here for two days now. We, on the other hand, have already been here for about five years, but we have not yet gotten the chance to enter the stronghold. So, hold on, you still have a few more years to start becoming envious. Seriously? Then what was the issue about telling us that when we come here, we were going to get stronger than before? As long as you have money, you can purchase several things in the city. Anyway, those things cannot be found outside the new domain, and they are not allowed to be taken out. Although they might be precious to us, they are completely useless to the people that are inside the stronghold. Damn it. If I knew that it was going to be this way, then I would not have decided to come over. I would have been enjoying myself out there now. It is not like they are prohibiting you from leaving. But anyway, you never know. You might just get out when the people from the stronghold decide that they are going to take everyone that is inside the city into the stronghold. Whatever. I'll just hold on for a few more days. If there are no more changes, then... I can go out and enjoy myself. There's no need for me to continue getting caged in this place without anything to get. Anyway, I don't have money to purchase anything from the market in the city. At the entrance of the stronghold, the ones that were in charge of security were not to be underestimated. For security purposes of the stronghold, the organizations present inside the stronghold always collaborated with each other to ensure that the security was maintained. So, they all sent at least 25-star ordinary human-level humans. Apart from that, they also sent forward a 7-star ordinary level human to be in charge of the team of 20. Of course, there was none of them that decided to take something like shifts. If they decided to leave a single organization to handle the entrance, they might not even know when the other organization snatched away many talents. This time, Samantha did not give this group of people the time to stop them. Instead, as she approached, she revealed the armor that she was currently wearing under the overcoat. The group of people who were just about to prevent them from going any farther were surprised when they saw the armor. Moreover, they were even more stunned when they realized that the number of stars was actually eight. With respectful expressions on their faces, they both retreated as they opened the gate. Of course, they did not open the entire gate. Instead, they opened the small gate where humans were using to enter and exit the stronghold. After Jack and his group finally stepped into the stronghold, they finally realized that the stronghold was completely a different world. The streets were full of people, those that were ordinary humans and those that were normal humans as well. In other words, this place was just like any other civilization, no different from a city. It was just that, currently, it was managed by a group of strong people. Some people in the stronghold always start their own families. 
So, there are a lot of children that are born inside the stronghold. Since they are born inside the stronghold, they are not chased out even if they don't have potential. Samantha explained. Instead, they are the ones that are mainly used for logistics. They are in charge of maintaining the shops, cleaning, cooking, and so on. In other words, they are in charge of the miscellaneous things that are needed to be done inside here. The majority of the time, ordinary humans are always training. So, they don't really have that much time to go and start cooking. Samantha continued. Jack nodded with an indifferent expression on his face. He could see that currently, there was not that much difference in terms of the behavior of the people inside the stronghold and those that were found in other cities. The difference was just the level of technology that was found here. He realized that the vehicles found here were almost the same as the ones that he had introduced in the normal world. It was just that, the vehicles here were more advanced. Some of them even did not have drivers, but instead, they depended on AIs to be driven around the stronghold. Inside here, there was no use of mobile phones. Instead, there were specific communication devices that were used here. They were more advanced than the mobile phones that were used by the normal people. Let us head towards the Panthers organization. I don't want to waste that much time. Since you told me that the Panthers organization is the strongest, then I can start by dealing with it since I have some issues with it. Jack stated after a moment of silence. Although Samantha was not sure about the level of strength that Jack possessed, but she hoped that it was enough. She had heard rumors about the leader of the Panthers organization. From those rumors, she could tell that the leader of the Panthers organization was not only ruthless and cruel, but she was also strong. So, if Jack went there without enough strength, then they were bound to be in trouble. Although she had been suspecting that Jack was from the stronghold, a big one at that, but from the way that he was behaving, it was as if he possessed no information about the stronghold. Although she was not sure about the big strongholds that were found inside the stronghold domain, but still, she was sure that to enter the big strongholds, then, the entrances were just the same. It was just that, the entrances into the stronghold domain and the areas where the big strongholds were located were more tightly guarded. Moreover, the mercenaries were not allowed in that area. All the same, she knew that there was nothing that she could do even if Jack was not strong enough to resist the Panthers organization. She had already signed a contract that she was going to obey every command that Jack and Celine gave. For that reason, there was no way that she was going to abandon them, unless she wanted to die. Additionally, she had already decided that she was going to follow Jack. Since Jack was capable of making Celine a superhuman so easily, she believed that it was going to be an easy task for her to become stronger. The wish that she had was to, of course, stop being a cannon fodder. Although she might be considered strong inside the stronghold, but this level of strength was nothing at all when compared to the entire stronghold domain. They were nothing more than just foot soldiers. So, Samantha led the way towards the Panthers organization. Although she was not sure about Jack's current level of strength, but she knew that he was already a superhuman. Additionally, there was also Celine who was also a superhuman. So, with two superhumans making a move at the same time, she believed that even if the leader of the Panthers organization was strong, there was no way that she was going to defeat two of them at the same time, right? At the same time, Daniel had finally entered the stronghold. He was familiar with this place as he had been inside this stronghold several times already in the past three years. He walked towards the direction that he normally did. They did not meet inside any organization, rather, they always met in a residence of which he did not know to which organization it belonged to. In reality, until now, even Daniel himself did not know which organization he was working for. He knew that currently, inside this stronghold, there were seven organizations. But still, out of all of them, he did not know which one he was working for. Even the person that was giving him the mission never revealed anything to him. It seemed that whatever he was doing was always kept as a secret. As for how that was possible with the same meeting point, that was not something that he cared about. Not long after, Daniel finally arrived in front of a villa. This villa was located a little far away from the center of the stronghold. This was mainly the area where people from the different organizations resided. The villa in front of him was not that big. Instead, it covered about 200 square meters, composed of two floors. It was painted sky blue, and it had a courtyard that was filled with several flowers that emitted an attractive scent. With incredible familiarity, he went ahead and opened the door of the villa. But, what he saw was not what he was expecting. Rather, the person that he found inside was not the same person as he had been expecting. Instead of the man that he had always met with, this time, there was a lady that was waiting for him. She had blue hair and brown eyes. 
The brown eyes were looking at him indifferently, with no emotion that he could detect from them. Just as Daniel was flabbergasted, wondering what he was supposed to do, or perhaps if he had come to the wrong place, the lady spoke. Come in. There's something that I want you to do for me. Her voice was just as cold as her expression was. Daniel felt a shiver running down his spine. Although he had always known that the man that he had always met with was actually strong, but he realized that, in front of this lady, he felt helpless. He was a soldier. So, he was good at judging the situation. And, looking at the lady who was looking at him nonchalantly, he could tell that she was not simple. Moreover, just from her disposition, he could tell that he was way above the one that he had always met with. Who? Who are you? For the first time in a long time, Daniel stuttered as he asked. Even he himself was surprised by his reaction. He had never expected that he was this anxious in front of the lady. She had not done anything, and neither did he know anything about her. But still, her aura was enough to make him behave in such a way. The lady looked at him with a cold expression on her face. Then, she said, I have already said that you have to come in. Then, you better do that. Additionally, since I am the one here, you should not be expecting that the one that you were meeting with previously is going to come. This time, I'm the one that is going to give you the mission. At the same time as she spoke, she released part of her superhuman aura. And the moment that it landed on Daniel, he immediately felt the danger, threatening his life. He had become a soldier for over a decade before the injury forced him to retire. For that reason, his instincts had been horned to a great extent. And right now, he felt that if he made even a single wrong move, then he was going to be killed. Anyway, this was to be expected. Although it was true that Daniel was actually strong, but still, he was just a normal human who possessed some strength. He was not like the ordinary humans whose strength had already far surpassed normal humans. So, in front of a superhuman, he was no different from a chicken that could be easily strangled and killed. It was also due to the feeling of being small in front of the lady in front of him, added with the information that he had received from her, that he knew that she was somehow related to the person that he had been meeting with previously. And it seemed that she was the one that had called him over. Since the person that called him was the same, then, that implied that, this lady was actually a superior to the guy that he had been meeting with. Gulping, he steeled his heart and stepped into the living room of the villa. Then, he went and sat opposite the lady, waiting for her to speak up. When she saw that Daniel had finally followed what she wanted, she stopped releasing the aura that was suppressing him. After waiting for some time for Daniel to calm down a little, she began speaking. This time, I'm going to give you a mission to investigate about someone. I will not require you to engage in a fight but you can fight in case there is a need for you to do so, Sylvia stated. And immediately after that, she took out an image that had been drawn by an artist from the Panthers organization and gave it to Daniel. Daniel received the drawing. On the image, he could see that this image belonged to a young man with silver hair and blue eyes. His features were quite eye-catching, and if he was in a crowd of people, he could be easily told apart with the distinctive features that he possessed. According to the information that I possess, that person is present in a country called Azima. To be specific, his whereabouts are mostly in Kartu City. The lady continued. Daniel nodded. If it was just to find a person, then it was not a difficult task. Anyway, it was not as if he had been told to go and abduct this person. So, all that he needed to do was to gain information about this person. After that, he was supposed to bring it back. And after that, his mission would be completed. As for the reason why this lady who was incredibly strong had to come over personally to give him the mission, he was not sure. But still, he could tell that this was supposed to be confidential. I should be able to complete the mission within a month or two. This is in case detailed information is required. But if it is just finding the person himself, that should take me a week at most, Daniel stated. Of course, humans were not trees or mountains. Although he was told that the person that he was supposed to look for was to be found in Azima, there was no guarantee that this person could not have gone to another place. Anyway, with the connections that he possessed as the top mercenary group, it was not going to be a difficult task for him to know where this person was. That's good. But, try to make sure that you make it less than one month. I want the detailed information about that person. Moreover, once you complete this mission, you will be rewarded personally by me. The lady stated. Thereafter, she got to her feet and left, leaving behind Daniel who was dumbfounded. He had claimed that he needed at least a month and at most two months to get detailed information, but now, he was being asked to make it less than a month. It seemed that there was a lot of importance in this mission. So, he had to be more careful when he went out. 
Otherwise, he might not even know how they might end up failing the mission and what kind of punishment might be administered to him. After Sylvia left the villa, she went back to the Panthers organization. She was currently waiting for Derek to come back before deciding to make a move personally. Even though she had assigned Daniel to look for information about Jack, she knew that he was not going to get anything. After all, Jack had a superhuman with him. As for his current level, nobody knew. That implied that what Daniel was going to find was just the same information as the Guardians that had gone out to look for the information. But all the same, she was not willing to risk anything. So, she had decided that she was going to utilize all methods to find the information. If strength could not be utilized, then he was going to utilize the people that were going to be the least suspected. After all, sending a normal person after a superhuman was something that was completely illogical, unless a person had lost his mind. To be able to become the supreme leader of the Panthers organization was not something that she had done just because of her strength. The debut release occurred at N. OV3L equals B, J, N. Otherwise, if she just depended on her strength, then she might have ended up being killed. Moreover, it would not have been easy for her to become a superhuman in front of everyone else. When she arrived back at the Panthers organization, she felt that there was something off. The group of guardians that was always involved in training, trying to make sure that they got stronger, and even those that were competing for the position of the vice supreme leader, the ones that were struggling to break the genetic lock and become superhumans. All of them were gathered outside a single building. What is going on here? Sylvia asked as she looked at the group in front of her. The group was so focused at looking at the building in front of them that they did not even realize when Sylvia appeared behind them. So they were surprised by the sudden voice coming from behind them. But still, all of them were able to react at an incredible speed. They turned around, ready to fight. But of course, all the ferociousness that was on their faces disappeared the moment that they saw Sylvia. Supreme Leader. They both greeted her, with fearful expressions on their faces. They had just been about to attack her, and from how they knew her, if anyone offended her, then they were bound to have a difficult life. Anthony was a real-life example of this. I asked what is going on here. Sylvia asked once again. This time, she released the aura of a superhuman, immediately making the group in front of her begin to sweat profusely. It, it's just that there is a group of four that has come over, claiming that they want to meet you. We tried to stop them, but they have a superhuman with them. Moreover, even Samantha is here. One of the people that wanted to take over the position of the vice supreme leader from Anthony stepped forward and stated, This group of people had been relaxing when suddenly, a group of four came over. Moreover, from the way that they came over, they did not give a sh asterisk t about the fact that this was actually the Panthers organization. Since it was their organization that was being provoked, they could not stand idle and let the newcomers do as they pleased. At first, it was just the low-level members of the Panthers organization that were confronting Jack's group. But all of them were scared when they realized that Samantha had an armor that had eight stars. Knowing that they were not her match, they decided to call over their own guardians. But when the guardians came over, they were beaten up by Denali. For that reason, they had no choice but to contact those that were at the same level as Anthony. And when those came over, they were immediately intimidated by Celine who released her superhuman aura. For that reason, although they were reluctant to have people that behaved atrociously in front of them, they had no choice. They were not fools. In the face of a superhuman, they were nothing at all. So, no matter how angry they were, there was nothing that they could do. Moreover, they had realized that Samantha was here. They did not understand why she had come over with another group, rather than the people from the Butterfly Organization. But anyway, all of them hated her considering that the death of Eric was related to her. They did not hate Samantha because they loved Eric. It was just that, with the death of Eric, the strength of their organization had dropped. So, they were not happy about it, of course. In the end, the group could only watch as Jack's group entered the building, which was used as the reception of the organization where all those that wanted to be recruited had to go through. After they entered there, the group of four just sat down and waited patiently. This immediately relieved the group that had come over. It was good that the other party was not making trouble. Otherwise, the situation was going to be so bad considering that currently, they were not even sure where the supreme leader had gone to. Without a superhuman here, then, this group could actually easily kill all of them. Making sure that they did not agitate the other party, they decided to stay out of the building, continuously keeping an eye on them. Sylvia squinted her eyes after hearing what she had been told. It was not that strange that the Panthers organization was visited by a superhuman, considering that, 
There were other organizations inside the stronghold that had superhumans. There were times that these leaders of the organizations came over to pay a visit to her because they had an issue to discuss or something like that. But what immediately got the attention of Sylvia from the words was that Samantha was also here. Is this group from the Butterfly Organization? Sylvia asked. I don't think so. Only one of them is wearing an armor that belongs to the Butterfly Organization. As for the rest, they are just wearing casual clothing. The man replied once again. Knowing that there was no need for her to continue asking, she went ahead and entered the building. She looked at the lobby area that had several couches that were used for the reception of visitors, where a group of four was sitting there. What made her brows twitch a little was that this group was actually acting as if they were in their own territory. Apart from Samantha and Denali, the other two were actually focused on their phones, scrolling them. With a frown on her face, Sylvia was just about to speak when she suddenly stopped. Her pupils contracted and she looked at the silver-haired young man. I never thought that I was planning to go over and look for you. When you suddenly decided to come and look for me. It seems that it is fate that the two of us meet this soon. Sylvia thought to herself as she looked at Jack who had completely ignored her presence. She stepped forward before arriving at the lobby area. After that, she went ahead and sat in the opposite direction of Jack. From the information that she had received previously, she knew that Jack was the leader of the group that had beaten up the four guardians and killed one of them. Mind telling me why you came over to my organization? Sylvia asked after a moment of silence. Jack shifted his attention from the phone, where he was going through the information that he had received from Samantha, and looked at Sylvia. From the disposition of the lady in front of him, he could tell that she was a leader. And as if to confirm his suspicions, a system prompt appeared in front of him. The lady in front of you is at the second stage of the superhuman level. And when he read the prompt, he was a little surprised. After all, According to the information that he had received, all the leaders of the organizations present in the small strongholds were only at the first stage of the superhuman level. But, from the looks of it, the lady in front of him was hiding a lot. Currently, as she sat there, there were almost no fluctuations around her. It was also a little difficult for Jack to know that the lady in front of him was actually a superhuman if he did not pay much attention. On the other side, after asking the question, Sylvia began scrutinizing Jack. She tried several times to know if he was a superhuman or not, but still, there was nothing that she could find. It was as if Jack was just a normal person and had not even reached the ordinary level. As for the lady who was seated beside him, just like him, she looked ordinary other than the beautiful appearance that she possessed. But still, after Sylvia paid much attention to her, she realized that there were several fluctuations around her. I guess you already know the reason why I am here. There's no need for us to beat around the bush. So, I have one question for you. Where is she? Jack asked in a cold tone. When Sylvia heard his question, she was a little dumbfounded. At the same time, she was completely displeased by the tone and attitude that Jack possessed. What do you mean by where is she? And, who is this sheesh that you're referring to? Managing to prevent herself from doing something unspeakable, she asked, trying to keep her calm. Jack's brows creased. He looked at the lady in front of him, and from the tone that she was using, as well as the expression that was on her face, it was clear that she was not lying. But still, Jack thought that she was just trying to play dumb. But, he was not willing to play with her. He still had a lot of things to deal with, and a lot of things to learn. So, why was he supposed to continue wasting time with the lady in front of him? I came here to look for my mother. From all the clues that I have received so far, everything tells me that my mother is supposed to be here. So, where is she? At the same time as Jack asked, he began revealing his superhuman aura. Currently, just like Sylvia, he had already reached the second stage of the superhuman level. It was just that, due to the assistance of the system, he was capable of fighting against those that had reached the third stage of the superhuman level. One had to know that it was an extremely difficult task for a person who was at the first stage of the superhuman level to fight against another that was at the second stage. The possibility of fighting against a person who was a stage higher than oneself was only if that person actually possessed a special ability. A good example would be Celine who currently possessed the telekinesis special ability. When Sylvia detected the aura that was coming from Jack's body, she was immediately surprised. Previously, she had found that Jack did not have the presence of any energy in his body. It was as if he was just a normal person. But now, it was completely different. It was as if Jack had suddenly transformed from a harmless kitten into a ferocious tiger. Moreover, she detected that the aura that Jack was emitting was actually capable of suppressing her. 
Without hesitation, she released her aura as well. The two auras clashed with each other. Although what was happening was not physical, but still, both Samantha and Denali who had not yet reached the superhuman level felt stifled. Currently, they felt as if their chests were stuffed, and they were having a difficult time breathing. Celine also felt the immense pressure that had appeared inside the lobby area. She turned her attention from her phone and looked at Sylvia. Then, detecting that both Samantha and Denali were uncomfortable, she also released her superhuman aura, which headed towards Sylvia as well.